So this is part two of me spending time with the world's best watchmaker. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out because it helped put all of this stuff into context. I put a little link here uh, and a link in the description uh, so you can go check that out. It's basically me spending time with Roger Smith, arguably the best watchmaker in the world. back to Barking Jack. I am Adrian and this channel is just about me exploring watches. I'm not a watch expert, I'm just a watch lover and I pretty much just document what I find out about watches and, and, and my experiences. If you like that sort of stuff hit subscribe down the bottom and make sure you hit the bell icon as well because the next video will be launching around Friday, Saturday next week this week, whenever this goes, the Friday and Saturday after this video goes out. And if you want to support the channel, jump over to BarkandJack.com and get yourself a nice NATO strap. So today we're going to be looking at Roger Smith's Series 4 watch, his most complicated watch so far, and he's very open about the challenges that he's had creating this watch. You're going to have to excuse the noise in the background. We were recording this in Roger's little office just off the, the, the workshop. Uh, so there's people using lathes, there's people bashing about in the background, people coming in and out. I hadn't actually planned on using the audio from these clips. This was just supposed to be B-roll for overlays on top of the interview. Uh, but as we got going, I realized that actually this was incredibly interesting information. And I love the fact he was so open and uh, sharing with, with his thoughts and his, his challenges and also the information that he has. Um, so it's, I had to use it. I had to create a video out of this because it was just, uh, I loved what he was saying and it was so incredibly interesting. If I were to design a watch, I imagine you would start off with the, the movement and you look at where the placement of all the functions are. So do you have a sub second and where is that sub second? Do you have a date window? Where is the date window? Then you'd, you'd build the watch around that. But for Roger Smith, he says, You always start off with a dial. And, you know, the dial is the most important feature of any watch. And uh, because it's what the client looks at day in, mm -hmm. day out. So you start off with the dial. And then if you're happy with the dial, then you have to sort of try and work out a mechanism that will provide that information on the dial. And um, sometimes it won't work. In this case, it didn't work. And <laughs> what I realized was these two date windows were too wide apart. I wasn't going to be able to achieve what I wanted. Sure. So then I had to relook at the dial. So here they were brought in inwards. And then from then you start all this drawing work. That's your barrel, centre, third, fourth. This is single wheel, coaxial. And you're working. So this is everything. Well, this is a dial, all your under dial work here. And then this is what you would see through the back of the watch with your balance cock and barrel bridge and so on. So this is the development phase of the Series 4. So I will create a drawing, so that's an underdial bridge here. This will then be passed on to Andy Dalson in the other room. He'll machine the part for me and I can fit it into the watch. And as with all prototyping, there's always changes. So then I'll come back, modify the drawings and then pass them on to him again for remachining. And, and I mean, this Series 4 has been a particularly difficult watch just because of the complications, mm -hmm. because it's all instantaneous. Um, triple, it's an instantaneous triple calendar. It's been a very, very complex process, which is now fortunately drawing to an end. We're at, we're at on the other side now, sort of thing. So. so it's just then a matter of sort of signing off on the drawings and then we can start to build the first few pieces. And uh, I'll build those first few pieces, make sure everything is 100%. Then I can start training the guys to do that work as well. So. Um, it's a huge process oh, it is, it is, yeah. and everything has to be designed you know I mean when you're making a one-off watch I never used to design, draw anything out because you just make it tweak it and adjust it until it fits but the way I work today is obviously every single tiny component you know down to your screw has to be drawn up and you know made and has to be so precise <laughs> so these are all the scrap parts you know and this you know you sort of whittle away that's just how I work it's quite mm -hmm. a it's probably not a very good way of working, but it seems to suit me. When you're at this stage, so when I'm designing this, so the big, the challenges are, well, how do I get the, uh, the day, the month, and the um, date to jump over instantaneously? So you know that basically the whole mechanism is going to be driven off the hour wheel. That's right. a start point. And then you, 
we'll work out that these are obviously driven off wheels um, sort of large discs which are underneath the dial you know that the day jumps over obviously the seven days in a week so there's seven teeth on there 12 teeth on the month and um, disc and so on and then you then you try and link all these features together so you link the dates you link the day and the month together you have to try and design a mechanism that instantaneously bang those three jump over and that's where the challenge starts what powers that, that immediate jump is it a spring it's a spring that has to be loaded each unit in this case has its own jumper spring so that when it's when the wheel is kicked it'll jump onto the next tooth and stop so it's a very difficult mechanism to design because you're loading a one spring which then through a mechanism will suddenly push forward three other um, features which have their own springs right. and it's trying to you've got to try and you have all this contained energy in one spring that then explodes and then the other three springs and their wheels all react instantaneously but then it's controlling that power because you've got this big explosion and that can if it in effect cause double jumping of different features so you, you, your wheel could jump two days instead of one day so the great challenge is to then balance the whole mechanism and that's really what's taken the time is containing this initial explosion from a spring and then containing it in these three different points and um, balancing it and the whole the whole mechanism is a big balancing act and it's an interesting process because you um, you know you can go on for month after month after month trying to contain this trying different ideas lightening refining components and um, it just you're just not getting anywhere and then suddenly there'll be a dramatic change in the design and then it's almost harmony throughout the whole mechanism <laughs> suddenly you get this moment where oh, at last and it's all controllable and then at that point the whole mechanism is so easily controllable it's very hard for it to go wrong right it's it's kind of almost a tipping point you know you just keep going on making slight improvements and it's going on and on and on and then it's like a eureka moment and suddenly the whole mechanism is sorted and it's trying to achieve that that's the that's been the challenge with the series four that's been really difficult so what you have is the day of the week the month phase of moon eventually and then you have this traveling aperture here oh yes so in theory you should all jump over if you watch that big spot there for the moon, um month so that's it trying to achieve that as softly with as little power as possible that's the key so these are all 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 the dummy watches so that's a series four so you build this i mean obviously a lump of brass for a moment mm -hmm. but you have to just finalize all the case design um dial design and the weight of the watch is very important so the case is gold and the dial is um i mean the dial on the actual production watch will change slightly um but you know you have to go this through this process because it's got to look right when it's on the wrist guys i hope you liked that video as much as i did i absolutely loved being uh, kind of talked through the mindset and talked through the, the, the thought processes that, that roger has around his his watches and just being able to see the insight into all, all the cad stuff that they're doing it's, it's really quite amazing um and the fact that he has to do this stuff now because he has other people helping him to make certain parts of the watches before this was stuff was just in his head and, and it might be a few sketches around but it was just i'm just going to make it and just, just get on with it so it's, it's quite interesting seeing that process of of him transitioning from a one-man unit to 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 a multi-person unit which is it's really quite cool don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on the third part of this series the third series is going to be another well the latter part of my interview with roger and hearing him talk about his thoughts on watch collecting and what he collects. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you do want to support the channel, jump over to BarkandJack.com and grab yourself a NATO strap. Check me out on Instagram at BarkandJack. 
and subscribe to the channel down below. If you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.